and he's talking on political communication networks. Please. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to show my work. So uh, I'm going to show you some results that I obtained with a student, Yves Souza, is Wesley, and in collaboration with some, some colleagues from Spain and Italy. Uh, actually, I will tell you about a, sp and a specific problem, but the idea is to show our method that we propose to uh, quantify this phenomenon called eco chambers. I will explain you a bit more about this. Um, so uh, uh, just to, to, to introduce you some justification for this kind of study. For example, we know that social media is a very important way to communicate today. Uh, in this picture, we can see the, <clears throat> the fraction of the population in different places that have some access to social media. For example, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. Uh, and except in a few places, for example, here in the middle Africa or in the Central Asia, uh, more than 50% of the population of all these countries are involved somehow with social media. I, uh, it's quite general, people from different ages, so it's a very important issue. We communicate in a very fast, in a very instantaneous way nowadays. So it's ensured, it, it, this is an issue that's very, is, is very important. Uh, so let me sh show uh, only a few numbers. This is the uh, time per day that people uh, spend with social media in different countries. Uh, here it is in the decreasing order, if you look for Brazil, that's the problem that I'm going to study is, uh, is related to, to interaction in social media in, in Brazil is the second country in, in the world where people spend more time in social media. If you look the, where they uh, spend less time is Japan. Okay, you can compare. You have, see Japan, German, South Korea, Austria. Here you see Philippines, Brazil, Colombia. So there is uh, a high correlation between the level of, of the development of the societies with the amount of time that you spend in social media. It's a curious. Uh, data, but it's a quite important point. You, people in Brazil used to spend three and a half hours a day in a social media. It's a lot. I do not spend three and a half a day because I don't have, but my wife spends <laughs> more than this. Uh, and she has two kids. Okay. Uh, here is some data only for Brazil, for different social medias. So the first one in Brazil is YouTube, because YouTube, you can interact with your other users, other users. You can comment. You can post messages. But uh, the second one is Facebook and so on. But I will discuss Twitter in this, in this talk. Because Twitter is an open access uh, uh, platform, one, one you can um, uh, mine data, and you can generate your own data sets to investigate. So Twitter is, is a very interesting uh, 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 social media to, to, to investigate from the point of view of social science. Uh, if you look for other countries, there is some similarities you use to change the most important ones. Uh, for example, uh, WhatsApp is not used a lot in the United States, but in Brazil we use a lot. And things, important things happen because, can happen because of the communication in the social media. For example, the last elections was heavily influenced by the activity in WhatsApp, for example. Uh, so let me explain you briefly what is eco chambers. The idea of eco chambers is that you share uh, ideas with people that have the same ideas that you have. So you are speaking, for example, this, this cartoon illustrates quite well, you are speaking uh, in a hill, and you can, see, you can, you can hear your, your voice back. So echo chambers is used for this, because uh, you like, for example, football. Okay, you are a supporter of, of Corinthians, or a supporter of Palmeiras, the, the two most popular teams here in Sao Paulo. So you don't like to speak about football with the, if you're a supporter of Corinthians, you don't like to speak about football with a supporter of, of Palmeiras. And the politics, this helps a lot. 
I, I can give you a few examples. Brexit is a good example. Uh, USA elections, and even discussions about sports, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many, many, many examples of polarization and the formation of, this, of these eco chambers. And there is also a, 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 a big discussion about if these echo chambers are so important as we used to claim that they are. So, but I would discuss about a different problem. Uh, I, I imagine that everyone, most of, uh, many of you, uh, remember this, this fact because many people here are Brazilian. 2016, the, the former president Dilma, herself, uh, 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 undergo the, the impeachment process. And there is a lot of, pro of protests uh, against and, uh, and, uh, and uh, in favor of, the, of this process. And the people were very engaged also in social media. So that's the problem that I'm going to discuss with, with you. So we have here the, the supporters of, of Dilma and those that prefer the Dilma out of the government. And there is huge protests on both sides. This side was bigger, but this also there is a lot of of protest. So I'm going to discuss about this specific problem. Okay, this is a bit out of date problem because we have uh, uh, a lot of activity in the social media about politics with the, the new government and people use a lot. But this is a subject for the future study. Um, so uh, the discussion about the impeachment was very, very active in the Twitter. Here I have some examples of Twitters that were against the president, the former president, and the other that were supporting the, the, the president. So you have uh, uh, many interactions of this type. Um, so uh, I will explain to you what's the essential of a Twitter, because Twitter is not so popular. And uh, we, we need some limit. This is the Twitter that uh, I, I posted yesterday. I'm not very active in Twitter. Maybe this is my third Twitter in my life. Uh, but uh, I like the the... the, the the talk of Ginestra, so we can use, you can post a, a, a message and you can mention somebody with the nickname, his is the, is the nickname of Ginestra, and his, I think so, this is the dimension, uh, uh, the ICTP of South America. So uh, you can put uh, hashtags to, to other people that are interested in the same subject can receive this, 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 uh, this content, and you can, uh, an important thing, you can just pass this message to other people just clicking here. For example, there is four interactions. One of them is Francisco, who is here. He's one of my few friends in Twitter. I must have uh, maybe a half a dozen. Uh, this one, this is the order two, are my three students that they are, they are obligated to do this. <laughs> and this one is, is a new friend that I don't know who who is probably a friend of Ginestra, is not mine. So, but you can just replicate a message with a minimal effort. So it's, it, it's important because, uh, okay, it's too easy to just uh, 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 pull a button and uh, push a button and, uh, 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 and send a message. Okay, so this, these things are important. The, the mention, that you have mentioned some users, and the hashtags that are used to classify the, the message, and also, Retweets, that to my study, they are, they, I don't want to retweet. I will explain this later. So uh, let me explain very quickly what he did. We, oh, sorry. Oh, okay, because uh, what we did, we, we collected, we created the list with many keywords. This, these keywords were related to, to, to the process of, of impeachment. For example, uh, some here that uh, uh, important for for example, Fora PT. PT was 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 the working partner that was the part of the former president. There are, there are other ones called non uh, uh, golpe. Uh, there is no cup. So this kind of, of keywords, you can put Dilma, uh, Michel Temer. There is another keywords. We built a list with three. Uh, 350 keywords. These keywords were appearing in the, in the, in the Twitter. So we all just put it to start to collect. And we did the collection in real time. There is some API that you can use to collect tweet. With, you, you, you can put geographical localization, uh, specific keywords, specific user. You can do uh, whatever you want. Uh, 
we collect data, actually we collect data for different time windows, but we use it for this period, March 5th to December, that because the impeachment process was in September. So we, we, we chose the window of time uh, before and a bit later. The problem is that after the impeachment, um, we had some problems with, with the data because everyone, we had two sides, I will show you, but after the impeachment, uh, more or less, the two sides start to collapse against the same person that was the vice president that became president, Michel Timer. So we had a problem with the collection of data. Uh, so uh, the big difficulty of the work is to define if a given keyword or a given hashtag represents the sentiment that is in favor or against the impeachment process. That's the big problem. If you are a smarter guy, you would use machine learning. I made a joke just now that uh, from the thermodynamic point of view, I can be considered, considered a machine. Very low efficiency machine, but I can be considered as machine. And I learn very slowly, but I learn. So, but I mean, not, not this kind of machine learning that I'm telling. So I, we used this old fashioned machine learning. So people start to read all the tweets with that subject in the time window and decide, okay, this tweet can be used to express some sentiment against the impeachment process or in favor to get the to impeachment process. So uh, four people did this analysis. Myself, one student, and two friends, really good friends, because it's a huge amount of work. You stay two weeks reading tweets, because you have to read all the tweets to, to take the decision. And it, statistically, it, it worked. Okay? So we classified the, the tweeters in three types, pro-impeachment, anti-impeachment, and neutral. Neutral means that you can use, it's related to the impeachment, but does not express a clear sentiment, or can be used for both sentiments. For example, Dilma. Dilma is, is related to the impeachment process, but can be used for both, for pro-impeachment or anti-impeachment sentiment. So after this, this classification, we, we, have, uh, we decide to, to uh, we include only those that had at least three in four agreements. So if three of the, of the analyzer said, OK, this is a pro impeachment sentiment okay it's we use this this hashtag uh, as a pro impeachment sentiment or otherwise we use as a anti impeachment sentiment and so on so we can, we could classify the tweets based on hashtags that's important key you know work uh, well but the network in principle the number of user is quite huge we we collect 12 million tweets but uh, most seven millions had hashtags. But we want to, to filter this better because uh, it's quite well known in, in, the, in, the liter in the literature that retweets usually express polarized things because you use to, to retweet to uh, uh, reinforce the, the content of something that you like. For example, I will not say, okay, uh, <laughs> My team has lost. I will not retweet the message that my team has lost. So it's very well known. So if you include the retweet, this kind of polarization is not true. But if you look only for mentions, it's not. If you, this is uh, the, the analysis for, for, for general data in Twitter. So what we did, we first we exclude retweets for the, for the analysis and consider only tweets with mentions. Mention means that there is, to, to, know, uh, to know our understanding, means that there are some social interactions. If I mention you, I, there is some kind of social interaction, explicitly. So to, cons to consider in our analysis, we need this kind of, of element, and also we discard retweets, and also discard tweets with uh, um, conflicting sentiments. If in the same, in the same uh, tweet, a message that says, OK, I hate Duma, and the same message I say, I love Duma, I do not include in, this, in, in the analysis. So we are, we are filtering the process. And the last but not least, we extract the, the, the so-called the strongly connected component. The idea is that you must have a path that you can uh, 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 start in a given vertex and reach any other vertex in the network. 
you note that the interaction here are the message. So I send a message to you. You may not send a message to me. Okay. So this. So we did all this filtering process, and here are some activity along with the time. There are some peaks. That's some special events, and. Here's some analysis of activities just to show that this behavior is the same that you see in every, every uh, data set of Twitter. You, you see this kind of have tailored for low distribution. If you look for the distribution of activity or also for the inter event time between two, two Twitters. So our data set in principle is not very different for the rest of the Twitter data set. But here start different things. Here we we define the polarization of a user, the average sentiment of the, of the tweeters. So you can say the negative tweeter uh, sentiments are, are those that are in favor of the impeachment and the positive or against the impeachment. Uh, you see that there is uh, some asymmetry and you have also uh, some peaks in the activity that's more or less in the, in the extreme polarization. In the, the, those who are against the Twitter are more concentrated, and the with the favor is more is less radical. So uh, here is the is the network that we obtain. Uh, red is a reference to the to the work partner that used to be red, and blue, in that time it was the the the, the partner from PSDB that was the most the strongest part in in the in the, in the, in the position. So we, we we clearly see two components. Uh, here we have some data. They are not very different. Okay, we have 10,000 and 12,000. They are more or less symmetric. And here we start to see echo chambers. Here is the, is the polarization <coughs> of the, your neighbors. How polarized they are with respect to the political. Here is the polarization of the users. So you can see two spots. The lighter, more people there are in this, in this extreme. So we can see an echo chamber. It's, it's not surprising. We expect this because we discuss about politics. Um, what we did new in this is to characterize this kind of process, not using only uh, data analysis. We use a spreading process. Okay, these are basic spreading process, SIS and SIR, that uh, I imagine that most of you have heard about. They are very simple spreading process. I have an information, I pass it. To, to some someone that have contact, or and after some time I forgot, I forget this <laughs> this information, and using this kind of analysis we could measure the spreadability of information of a user, the the ability to spread uh, your content, uh, is just by basically the the fraction of of user that you reach in the, in the network. But you can see very, something that's very interesting. You can see there is a huge difference between the spreading power of those who uh, were in favor of the impeachment and those that were against the impeachment. Uh, people who supported the impeachment were much more efficient to spread your content. And you can see this for different models. So I'm going to finish showing this, this community structure here, I, we calculate the community structure here. The red ones are the supporters. Sorry, uh, people who are against the impeachment. You can see a much more elaborated structure in the people who are in favor of impeachment. Uh, it means that there is different profiles in people who are supporting the impeachment, while people who are against the impeachment are more or less of the same type, are more homogeneous. Uh, so I have some of, of conclusion. I will skip this, and only to show the team, this guy who did the, the hard work. Okay, the rest are the students of, of, of my group in Vizosa. Thank you. Some questions, please. I have a question about the data. The, at the beginning, you mentioned, for instance, something like the, how much the internet is used all over the world. Okay, Brazil yeah. was second in the amount of hours yeah. in the internet. So, uh, what I want to know is, uh, I, I'm going to ask two things together. One is, have you checked the difference between who, people who live in urban areas against those who live outside? 
Because I, my impression is that there are lots of people who live in the urban areas, which may just come in the morning, turn on the computer, turn on all the things that you check, and never look at it. Not never. Four times a day they look. They are not three hours in the internet. They have it on, which is a different, completely different thing. So that's why I check city against urban areas. Yeah, uh, actually, that was my initial idea uh, to, 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 to see the, the how to say, the geographical distribution of this kind of process, yeah. like cities and urban areas, different states. And my, my idea is that, for example, São Paulo is, I suppose that it was very different for Minas Gerais. But the, the point is that we need large data sets. So uh, if you have small data sets, you can, you can see nothing. So uh, our idea, initial idea, was to do this kind of analysis depend of the, of the geographical position, uh, which state you are. But it, we could not do this yet, because you do not have enough data. But it can be done. You, you can localize it geographically. You can do uh, a lot of things with this kind of data. But it, it's, uh, it's in, the, in a, how to say, a forthcoming project for this, continuation of this, of this work. Silvio, interesting analysis. Um, maybe you, you answered it and I lost, but uh, when you have uh, many, well, nowadays, uh, many uh, citations, uh, mentions in social networks are created by robots. Yeah. Uh, how do you, okay, thank you treat for the this? this uh, because actually, new, actually uh, it's a new fact in the, no, in the analysis. Actually, actually, this is the, uh, the idea to use. Uh, let's see, this strongly connected component. Because the idea that uh, you must, uh, 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 a an user in a human network must, must be uh, the source and the target of information. Uh, I mean, you, you can say the information, the information sh can, should go back to you. If you have a robot, usually you do not respond to robots. But we did, we, 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 did, we used some, some API for define robots. <coughs> In our, in our data set, in principle, there are hobbits, or robots, but uh, I, I check myself. I am considered a robot for this, for this program. So, but the amount of robots is, uh, is more or less the same in both sides. Uh, that's what I can say. So the idea of, this, of extracting this strongly connected component is that you, you avoid a lot of bots. That's the idea. Thank you for your question. Let's thank you for a wonderful talk. Um, the next speaker is uh, Desedio Vasquez. I don't see him. Um, so, shall we go on to the next speaker? Yes. Uh -huh. uh, Pedro Pessoa. Pedro Pessoa. Okay. Okay. So, shall we wait? His talk is later. Are you ready for your? Um, we can wait for you to get. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in the meanwhile, maybe some of the students. I would like the students to ask some questions to Silvio. And uh, while uh, um, they see the, oh, Pedro is getting ready with his things. Are there some students? Some student questions? Any student would like to ask a question? Okay. I will tell you when it is five minutes. I will tell you when it's five minutes. As well as I'll tell you when it's two minutes. Okay. Hello. Yeah. 
So first of all, once again, I would like to thank the organizers for the opportunity. My name is Pedro Pessoa. Uh, I am a PhD student at Universidad Albany in New York. <laughs> uh, and this work in particular has been done in collaboration with uh, my uh, PhD student, Felipe Costa, and my advisor, Ariel Katichan. Uh, starting the story, I am going to talk about each piece of this title, Anthropic Dynamics on Gibbs Statistical Manifold. First, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Gibbs, about what the statistical manifold is, and then about entropic dynamics. So, first things first, Gibbs comes from canonical distribution or Gibbs distributions, Gibbs measures. All of these are the same thing. They are probably distributions that can be put into this exponential form, where this Q is an underlying measure of your system. As you choose your system of interest, the axis, which can be the point in the phase space, as we have in thermodynamic, in the thermodynamics of gases, but it can be pretty much anything from lattice points to networks. Uh, and then we would going to have an exponential term in terms of these parameters, real parameters lambdas, which are the Lagrange multipliers, and I'm going to talk about it in a minute, and a series of functions. A, the sufficient statistics. Uh, usually in the thermodynamics of gases, the sufficient statistics are the energy and the volume. But in principle, they can be uh, 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 apply to anything, and actually most uh, probably distributions can be put into a canonical form. So, again, why are they so important? Because they are the result of a maxent procedure. If you maximize the entropy with a series of constraints, which is, of course, that your uh, uh, probability is normalizable, and you want uh, the uh, average value, you want to set the average values of these functions a's, they naturally arrive into a canonical distribution. So since you use these a's to define your, your distribution, you can see that both for a set of a's, average values, or for a set of uh, uh, Lagrange multipliers, you can uniquely define your distribution. So I could describe that for each lambda, for each value of lambda, I have one distribution, and for each value of the, uh, of the average values a's, I also have a distribution. And then I can calculate the entropy of them. This is exactly the same entropy you're going to find on your thermodynamics textbook. So the next part of the title is information geometry or statistical manifold. So as I have my space of probability distributions, I can parameterize the canonical distributions that we defined before, either through a map of lambdas or through a map of A's. And what is interesting about this space is that it has the fischer rao metric. This is a metric tensor for the distances between nearby points, uh, 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 nearby points in the map of the probability distribution. So what do I mean by this? This metric is unique. So if you want to measure the distinguishability, the only metric that makes sense in terms of probability distributions, in the terms of remember that your points has to some, is something called Markovian embeddings, is this one. And then we can use the generalized Pythagoras theorem to find these measurements of distances. This paper proves that this is the only one. Of course, you can describe another metric for your space, but they are not going to have the properties of a probability distribution. Anyway, my idea here is to develop a framework for dynamical systems for the parameters of probability distributions or for the parameters of canonical probability distribution. In this case, the values of A's, the expected values. This framework is only going to count for the macro states and not for the micro states. And I'm saying here that it's important to formulate dynamics in non-physics fields. Because in physics, although we make our uh, statistical mechanics, we know that on the bottom level, 
it's ruled either by the Newton's laws or by the Schrodinger equation. But the evolution of the microstate in economics or in ecology is much more difficult, is much more complex. Uh, the example I'd like to give is to say prices, right? I don't know who in the world is buying bread and selling bread, but I can go to the bakery and I can set up how, how much a loaf of bread is. Uh, in this uh, 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 stand, the prices are like the Lagrange multipliers. So, also, I want my dynamics to be a process of inference. That means I want these to be uh, consistent with Bayesian and entropic inference principles, uh, as we have a talk by Murillo earlier today. And, of course, take into account the geometric structure I was just talking to you about. So, having that, I am going to arrive at what I, what I call entropic dynamics, a framework for finding the laws of dynamics. And these laws of dynamics are, uh, I would say, an application of entropic methods of inference. That means I arrive at my dynamics by maximizing entropy. This has a, still a lot of results. It was in principle developed to deal with uh, 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 some uh, foundational questions in quantum mechanics and quantum field theory. But it already has found applications to economics and finance, and I have uh, uh, worked on using this to find renormalization groups. Um, so I added this slide to this talk because that was, well, when I was presenting a stat fees, that was something that people was uh, 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 unsure about. Although I'm talking about a space of canonical probability distribution, that does not mean that it only deals with equilibrium situations. Uh, I am setting this as my canonical distribution, and then I have a probability distribution over the expected values. That means it's like was a superposition of many canonical distributions. And then if you want to find a probability of a microstate, you just get this pro the, the, the probability of the conditional probability is going to be canonical, and a probability that is not going to be canonical at all. This idea of uh, uh, um, making a, uh, of making a probability is called in some places, in some uh, part of the literature, super statistics. So we are going to represent this change, the dynamics, as a change between a point A in the manifold to a point A prime. And of course, I can write the probability distributions for A and for A prime, and I would arrive at that equation. In principle, I'm just going to do the conditional probability and normalization. But I put the delta T here. What did I do? And I was not going to talk about it, but I had a discussion earlier with Michelle that m made this very important. The dynamical system is designed to be Markovian. So I am not saying here that I already have a, 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 a transition probability and I'm proving them to be Markovian. The Markovian uh, assumption came as a design criteria. Now, I am going to maximize entropy for the transition probability. But here, I did so that I have a transition probability for both for the microstates and for the macrostates. But I'm only interested in this one, the one for the macrostates. If I do this, again, I maximize the entropy. And this has absolutely nothing to do with the entropy that you find in the thermodynamics textbook. It's just that it's p log p over your measure. If I do so, I need a way to choose the prior or the measure. The idea is that in principle, at priori, I can separate my transition in x in the macro states to, from my transition on the macro states. And the transition in the micro states is uniform. 
So the microstate can change everywhere, but the macrostate, not. The microstate will have a prior of this form, which is almost like a Gaussian, but we have this term outside. This g to the one half is the uh, 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 signature of the metric, uh, sorry, uh, uh, is the uh, determinant of the metric that will give you the volumes in each, uh, 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 around each point in space. And here I have a distance, right? I have a distance square on delta t. That pretty much means it's like a Wigner process, a Brownian motion. The distance per curd cannot have a bigger uh, ratio than delta t to the one half. That means uh, it's also uh, a form of maximization of entropy in which my uh, displacements are continuous. Then later, I am going to go uh, I am going to set delta t going to zero. And I have this term eta that only uh, calibrates the units of time and the units of distance. Then our constraint. Our constraint is so that my distribution for x prime for the future microstate also has to be a canonical distribution like the ones we had in the beginning. So this constraint means that the total displacement is going to be just the uh, canonical distribution for the microstate and the transition probability for the macro state. If I do this, I arrived at this, uh, 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 at this transition probability that has a term that depends on the entropy of the point and uh, 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 my average displacement makes an inner product with the gradients of entropy, and I also have a term that will spread. This is better seen if instead of writing this as an integral equation, I write this as a diffusion equation. If I write this as a diffusion equation, oops, I will have a entropic drift that means a distance that goes uh, parallel to the entropy, and I will have a quote-unquote osmotic term that will go away from clusterings of probability. Of probability. So uh, uh, it goes towards the entropy and away from too much probability in the same place. And this is done, and that's what I get. We got the dynamical system. Of course, that doesn't mean uh, 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 that this is the only one. Uh, all the things that we could do, for example, is to change the uh, constraints. And sometimes, depending on the process, you are going to do this. Um, and this dynamical system can be applied to any form of, probably, uh, of canonical probability distributions. The microstates can be pretty much anything. That's completely general. And it depends, again, on the calculation of the gradients of entropy and the calculation of the metric, which are, although we need a lot of work, it can be done. So uh, this, again, is the simplest possible case. If we have, for example, uh, uh, four sequel mass times acceleration, we could have the simplest case is just a part, uh, free particle, a particle that goes away uh, eternally. So if this does not show us uh, something relevant about the dynamics of things, that's not uh, uh, something to stop, and we have to go back and set a, a, a different canonical distributions into different constraints. I here have one example, which to, to see how this dynamics evolves is a space of Gaussian manifolds. That means I have Gaussians, which are actually also a particular case of canonical distributions. And I, to get each probability distribution, I need a choice of mu, a choice of the average point, and a choice of sigma, the uh, uh, variance. I am going to use the average points as capital X and capital Y and sigma. These are going to be my three uh, uh, coordinates, right? So for each point that I choose these three coordinates, 
I have one Gaussian distribution. The Fisher information metric is going to be given by this one. So notice that if I cover, uh, 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 if I say that I set the same sigma, this is a flat space. And if I only move on sigma, this is a hyperbola space. But when we compute the entropy for Gaussian distributions, we see that they are only directly related to log of sigma square. So such a dynamics would only lead to bigger and bigger sigmas, to distributions more and more sparse. Mm -hmm. Then we had a different idea, which is to constrain our movement to a submanifold. So just like I have the uh, uh, metric that I calculated before, I say I cannot achieve every Gaussian distribution, but only the ones on top of this curve, or of this surface. If we do this, we arrive at this inducted metric. And here is one example of a, 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 a manifold, which is we have this space of Gaussians, and I make a Gaussian surface over it, and I see how it has a central uh, steady state. That's my example. And I would like to thank again, especially some of my uh, professors and colleagues at the University of Albany. Questions? Very nice talk. Thank you. I'd like students to ask questions. Very interesting, Pedro. But uh, one point uh, was not clear for me. In entropic inference, mm -hmm. you, you, the information of you, your system is translated to statistics. Yes. And you use this as constraints for the optimization problem that you give you yes. the distribution. Uh, I, I didn't got how you pick the information from uh, unknown dynamics. Mm -hmm. okay. information for unknown dynamics. The only thing I say here is this constraint. And it only says that the micro state will also have a canonical distribution as the one we defined at the beginning. As I said, is the... Uh, 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 yes, I'm supposing this. It's like, it's like the free particle. Okay, it's the first idea of dynamics that I could have. Uh, 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 if we are going to have something more particular, some other problem, we might have to change the constraints. Just like in F equals MA, you change the forces. Any other questions? Students? Come on. <laughs> we can wait. We have time. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank this was a lovely talk. <laughs> Okay. Um, so, Roberto, is that right? <laughs> Roberto Neto. <laughs> yes. Uh, she will speak on phase synchronization, intermittent behavior in healthy and Alzheimer effect affected human brain-based neural networks. 
and he's from uh, University Federal do Parana. Yes. And uh, welcome. Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, thank for, thanks for the opportunity to be here uh, to, to show my work. My name is Roberto Budzinski. Uh, I am from uh, Universidade Federal do Paraná. Uh, my advisor, I am a PhD student. My advisor is Professor Sergio Lopes, and I belong to the same research group of Professor Viana. And today I will talk about phase synchronization and intermittent behavior and neural networks. So this is uh, an overview of my presentation. Firstly, I will give uh, an introduction to the topic of my research. And after that, I will present the mathematical modeling of the neural behavior that we used, and the connection architecture that we used to build the, the network, and the, the quantifiers that we used to measure synchronization and intermittence and how synchronization varies on time. And at last, I will show the main results of this work about phase synchronization and intermittent behavior that support uh, our conclusions. So, the investigation of biological systems is a trending topic now. Here we have some presentations about this theme. And we know that anomalous dynamical properties may be related with neural disease, as Parkinson, Alzheimer, epilepsy. So, in this way, one of the main objectives of this work and of my PhD consists of the study of dynamical properties of neural networks. To do this, we need to use a mathematical model to describe the neural behavior. And to building the network, we need to use some kind of connection architecture. So here we have considering different uh, kinds of complex topologies, since in real neural system, uh, characteristics of complex topology are observed. And to measure our, uh, the synchronization of the networks, we use Kuramoto order parameter that was present for, uh, in some presentations here. And we use to recurrence quantification analysis. I will talk more about these quantifiers uh, later. So uh, I am studying this kind of system since my, my master. And we have some papers uh, published in this, in, in, in this topic. And we have observed a kind of anomalous synchronization, uh, a non-monotonic uh, synchronization, uh, a non-monotonic dependence of the synchronization as the coupling parameter. Uh, tomorrow, uh, uh, two colleagues will present about this, this topic. But here, I will talk about the non-stationary transitions. So we have observed that the neural networks uh, may depict uh, non-stationary transi transitions from unsynchronized state to phase synchronized state. And we have uh, some results in different systems. But here, we want to investigate these, these kind of these characteristics, uh, these dynamical properties in a network of network. So here, we we considering uh, the, the network of network based on human brain connect them. We are using a similar approach that Professor Fabiano Ferrari has present yesterday. Uh, but here we uh, have considering the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected one. So we investigate the synchronization characteristics, how the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case uh, depicts the phase synchronization. Uh, and we have studied the, the intermittence properties of these two cases. And we compared the healthy, one, uh, the healthy and the Alzheimer affected one. Oh, the results are published in this paper. So uh, in order to simulate the neural behavior, we use the Rukov map. It's a two-dimensional map where the x, the first equation, uh, represents the fast uh, variable of the system. And here we have considering bursting neurons. So the x, uh, uh, the, the x simulates the, the, the bursting behavior. 
And we have the slow variable of the, the, the map, the y, uh, that we use to evaluate the phase and use the Kuramoto order parameter. And here we have no identical bursting neurons given by the alpha parameter. And uh, we have uh, used uh, structures of a network of networks. So we have uh, two levels of coupling. We have the internal coupling and the external coupling given by these two equations. So we analyze this, the phase synchronization and the intermittent behavior and the parameter space of the internal coupling and the external coupling. Uh, we have considering a network of networks with seven to eight subnetworks, where each subnetwork has uh, 250 neurons. And the connection, uh, the external connection, uh, is given by the mean field of each network. So, uh, the internal connection uh, is given by a, a small word, uh, connection matrix. So we have a seven, eight small, uh, similar small word con connection matrices. And the external coupling architecture is based on uh, experimentally uh, results about a uh, health and Alzheimer affected patient. Uh, Fabiano has talked about these results yesterday. So here we have uh, a matrix, uh, uh, the matrix of the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case. And this is, these results are based on the experimental work of HEFI 5. And Fabiano and collaborators uh, have uh, changed the, 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 matrix, the experimental data in order to obtain a, a, discretized matrix, a, a discretized matrix where we have four levels of, of connections. We have zero, that means absence of connections, and we have uh, the level one, two, and three of external connections. So you use these matrices in order to build the external coupling architecture. Well, uh, to analyze the synchronization and the intermittent behavior, we use two procedures. We use the Kuramoto order parameter and recurrence quantification analysis. Uh, to use the Kuramoto order parameter, uh, we need to associate a phase to the bursting behavior. So we need uh, indiv individual information uh, of each neuron. On the other hand, to use the the recurrence quantification analysis, we need just a time series that uh, characterizes the dynamical system that we want to study. So uh, in our, our first paper, we have used the determinism. We have observed that, that the determinism is able to distinguish between uh, states, unsynchronized state to the phase synchronized state. And uh, to do this, we use the time series of the mean field. So here we have the, time, the mean field of each network, and here we have the global mean field, considering all the, the, the subnetworks and all neurons in, in, each, in each network. So to associate the phase, here we have the bursting behavior, the fast variable of the model, and we use the slow variable to associate the phase we know that each maximum of y, uh, the burst starts. So each maximum here, we, the phase is a 2 pi multiple. So using this first equation, we can obtain the phase as a function of time for each neuron in the entire system. So we can compute the Kuramoto order parameter for its subnetwork. And considering the entire system, we can compute the Kuramoto order parameter, the global Kuramoto order parameter. Uh, here, if Kuramoto order parameter gets close to one, we have a phase synchronized state. And if Kuramoto order parameter gets close to zero, we have a, an unsynchronized state. Well, to use the recurrence quantification analysis, we need a time series. As I said, we use the time series of the mean field of the network. And the recurrence quantification analysis is based on the recurrence matrix given by this equation here. So uh, we have a threshold, and if a point of our uh, time series is recurrent, is recurrent to other, we have a black dot in the recurrence point, in the recurrence plot, 
and we have uh, the number one in the recurrence matrix, for example. That means if a point in the, the time series, the difference between two points is, is smaller than a threshold, so we have uh, recurrence points. If the distance between, the difference between these points are bigger than the threshold, so we have not recurrence points. Uh, here we have an example of a recurrence plot for an, a non-synchronized state, and here we have uh, to a phase-synchronized state. We can observe difference between this case. To the phase-synchronized case, we can observe the diagonal structures here. So we use the determinism to, di to distinguish between them. Uh, the, the determinism evaluate the ratio of recurrence points that belong to diagonal structures. So, so in this case, the, the determinism value is bigger here in comparison to, in comparison to the, this case here. So we use the determinism of the mean field of the network to evaluate the phase synchronization of the system. This is the first result of this work. Here we, uh, we have the Kuramoto order parameter. Actually, we have the mean value of the Kuramoto order parameter. So uh, we have considered the parameter space of the external coupling strength and the internal coupling strength. Here we have the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case. Here we have the, the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case. Uh, so here uh, in the first row, we have the global Kuramoto order parameter. So here we have considered the entire system, all subnetworks. And here we have considering the subnetwork synchronization. Uh, in the first case, we can observe difference between uh, the healthy and the Alzheimer affected case. So uh, in both, we observe a transition from, from unsynchronized case, unsynchronized states to phase synchronized state or per, uh, uh, partial synchronized state. But in the Alzheimer affected case, we can observe a higher level of phase synchronization because the, the value of the, uh, the Kuramoto order parameter is higher to this region uh, in comparison to this region here. So here we have a first difference between the health and the unhealth case. The unhealth case depicts a higher level of phase synchronization when we consider the, the entire system. When we consider the synchronization uh, in the subnetwork level, we have similar case. So the difference is just in the global, in the, the external level in considering the, the global Kuramoto order parameter. In order to obtain details about uh, how synchronization varies on time and the intermittent behavior of the network, we use the temporal standard deviation of the determinism. Remember that the, the determinism is able to distinguish between phase synchronized state and unsynchronized state. So if the, the determinism value uh, is high, we have a phase synchronized state. If the determinism value is, is low, we have an unsynchronized state. And when we consider the standard deviation of the determinism, we can evaluate if the, synchro the, the synchronization is, uh, is varying as a function of the time. So if we have a, higher, a high value of the standard deviation, uh, we can conclude that the network is shifting between different states with different synchronization characteristics. So again, we have considering the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case in the same parameter space. So here we have the external coupling and the external coupling strength. And we can observe that to both cases in the transition regions, remember the, the previous slide, we have the transitions depicts in this, these regions here uh, from unsynchronized to phase synchronized states, we have uh, higher values of the standard, the temporal standard deviation. Uh, we have observed similar scenario in a single network in other papers, but here considering uh, the parameter space of external and internal coupling, we observe a similar scenario. However, when we compare G, the healthy case and the Alzheimer affected case, we can observe that the Alzheimer affected case, the unhealthy case, uh, depicts a bigger region in the parameter space where the intermittent behavior is observed. So 
What you do now is fix uh, the external and the internal coupling uh, parameters in six regions in order to analyze the temporal dependence of the synchronization. So now we have the PDF of the determinism. Remember that the determinism is able to distinguish between synchronization, syn syn uh, between the synchronization level of the, the network. So uh, the, the red line uh, represents the unhealthy case and the black dashed line represents the healthy case. So the first region, we have unsynchronized case because the value of the determinism is low. Uh, and we have a unimodal distribution, so we have a stationary unsynchronized state. To the last region, we have um, we have a, synchron a phase synchronized case because the determinism value is high. Uh, and we have, again, uh, unimodal distribution, so we have stationary phase synchronized case. And here, uh, the Alzheimer affected case depicts a higher value of determinism in comparison to the healthy case, uh, which corroborates the results from the Kuramoto order parameter. But uh, when we analyze the, the other regions, we can observe uh, B modal distribution, for example, in the region two, three, four, and, and we, we can, we can uh, analyze the system. If the, the network is shifted between two states, we have two peaks in the determinism distributions. So the network is shifting between a state with a lower synchronization level and uh, another state with a higher synchronization level. So we can observe this, this, uh, this behavior to both networks, uh, for example, in the region two. However, when we analyze the, re the region three, we can observe just in the unhealthy case, the B-modal distribution. This is because uh, the intermittent region is bigger than the Alzheimer affected case. We, uh, we compare to the region three in, in this parameter space, we can observe here a higher level of the standard deviation and here a, small, uh, a low value. So because of this, we have this kind of difference between two, two cases. Uh, if we divide the system into the lower state of this peak and the higher state of this peak, we can evaluate how much time the network is spent in each state before it shifts to the other. So I choose the, the, region, the region two, where the two case, the unhealthy, and the healthy depicts the, the B-modal distribution. And we can analyze the, the, the time that the network spend in each state, the lower state and the upper state, state to the healthy case and unhealthy case. And we can observe from smaller values of the, 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 the period, we observe a power law trend, and for high, uh, high values of this period, we observe a, a exponential trend. So here we conclude that we have a, a kind of two-state on-off intermittence in this, yes? Do these regions have a particular meaning, or are they arbitrarily defined or chosen? You selected different regions? Yes, yes, I, I select uh, different regions in this parameter space. So I have a external coupling value and I have an internal coupling value. And I can, uh, for all these, the regions, the yellow regions here or the white regions here, we have similar behavior. Okay? So we have, uh, for all these regions, the yellow regions in the parameter space, we have similar distributions here. And we have observed this kind of distributions in a single network, too. And so, as final considerations, we have uh, analyzed a network of networks based on human brain uh, connectum to a healthy case and Alzheimer affected case. And regarding phase synchronization, we observe a similar level of internal synchronization uh, when we considering just the subnetworks. But when we consider the global uh, system, all the subnetworks, we observe dif uh, we have observed uh, different phase uh, synchronization levels. The Alzheimer affected case depicts a higher level of phase synchronization. And regarding the intermittent behavior, using the determinism of the mean field, we are able to observe 
uh, intermittent behavior in both cases. However, to the unhealthy case, we have a, a bigger region and a parameter space where the intermittent behavior is observed. But uh, to the, uh, the two, uh, two cases, we observe the existence of a kind of two states intermittence between uh, a state with um, a smaller value of synchronization and a higher value of synchronization. So I would like to say thank you for your attention, and that's it. Let's give Roberto a very big hand. It was a fantastic talk. Thank you. Um, some questions to the audience. Ah. Sorry. I have a question about the last, uh, practically on your conclusions. If I understood well, you found that there are that regime where two uh, states can coexist, but uh, this has never been observed on the brain dynamic, the real brain dynamics in Alzheimer patients. So they can be synchronized or unsynchronized when they are submitted to a treatment. I mean, when they or even electrical stimulation, but on the spontaneous brain activity of Alzheimer patients, this intermittency has never been reported. So how can you explain that? Okay, uh, uh, we have uh, three different regimes, for example. When we analyze the Kuramoto order parameter, we have a kind of this behavior as a function of the coupling, for example. Here we have a parameter space of external and internal, but we have a similar behavior. Here we have unsynchronized state, and here we have phase synchronized state, for example. When we analyze the PDF of the determinism, we observe, for example, here we have the distribution of the determinism. So to the first case, we have a unimodal dis uh, distribution over a small value of the determinism. To this case, we have a unimodal distribution over a high value of the determinism. So here we have an unsynchronized stationary state, and here we have a phase synchronized stationary state. When you analyze the transition region, we can observe that the temporal, uh, the time series of the determinism is like this. So, uh, as a function of time. So, the network is on a state with a lower value of synchronization, and then go to a state with a higher value of synchronization, and then back to this state. Because of that, the distribution is like this, OK? But just in the transition regions. To this region or these regions, we cannot observe this phenomenon. Any further questions? Again, the students? <laughs> So you showed uh, the um, so the probability distribution of your timings, uh, but what about so mean first passage time? So because this looks like having so to say the two-state yes. um, hopping process between two attractors, and then so to say it's a question so how long would it take in the mean value so to say to uh, stay in one state and then go to the other? Uh, did you check this kind of quantities? Yes. Uh, the, the mean values are depicted here. Here are the, the time the system is spent in each state before it shifts to the other. Yeah, but this is the, the, the distribution function. So how does it change, so to say, when you change parameters? Because then you no, can... No, it's the same parameter. It's the same parameter. Here... Oh, maybe we discuss it in the coffee break. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this time, because there's a... Can I ask? Uh, Speaker, which is not present, so okay. you can answer it here. <laughs> can I, I can show now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so to this case here, we have considering a fix, fixed values of uh, the external internal coupling to each case. Okay. So what we have. Uh, did is we fix the external coupling and the ex internal coupling, and we analyze how the determinism value varies on time. So to, when we have a bimodal distribution, we have a kind of this. For a fixed value of external coupling and internal coupling, we just varies the time. 
without change any parameter. So this distribution uh, is about this existence time. How much the system is spent in each state yeah. before it goes to this state. And these distributions is about these states. I have considering a long time series, and then I, I do this, this kind of distributions. What I wanted to see uh, in a certain way is that this kind of escapes from one state to the other one are described by Kramer's law. So where you have a mean first passage time to go from one state to another state, but this depends, of course, so to say, on the um, on your uh, perturbations in the system. So probably this is not periodic, isn't it? No, no. There yeah. are the neurons are chaotic. Yeah, okay, so because then you can get, so to say, a picture so where you can find uh, the, a kind of approximation of your potential wells and you can also find the threshold to overcome so from this mean first passage time. Uh, we don't have anything ah, okay. in this, in this way. <laughs> okay, let's thank the speakers of this um, time. Silvio, Pedro and Roberto. Thank you very much. is larger and the post-session post as well. I think we come back at uh, 5. <laughs>